Welcome to this new session of Back to Basics, where we will be mastering and learning how to master a horizontal chop. Now, horizontal chop is different than a vertical chop, and we will understand how. Look at the lateral view of the horizontal chop. Here, we make slightly deeper trench than the vertical chop by creating at least 2, 2 to 2.5 phaco tips deep and slightly wider trench to allow for the phaco sleeve to be accommodated in the trench. The length of the trench should be approximately 50 to 60 percent limited and slightly more longer than a vertical chop. Now, look at the overview. You once embed with your FACO tape, create a FACO trench 50 to 60 percent long, embed the chopper in front of the FACO tape, approximately 1.5 millimeter, pull it towards the FACO tip and separate it while pulling. So, we see. This particular movement has three vectors. First of embedding inside the nucleus at the mid periphery. Second movement is pulling it towards the phaco tip while the phaco vacuum mode is on. And as it approaches the phaco tip, there is a sliding sideward movement of both the instruments. This creates a clear chop. So once again reviewing, it has got three components. First embedding into the nucleus, then pulling towards the phaco tip and then separation. Unlike a vertical chop, which has only two vectors, embedding and separation. Now, let us see this in a lateral view. You see that the FACO chopper and tip are moving towards each other. And as they are approaching each other after embedding, they are separated. This creates a clear cut chop. The same thing is repeated. Once you have two D segments, embed your FACO tip inside the middle of the meat of the nucleus in the vacuum mode. Be careful of not engaging the capsular axis. Your chopper sometimes can cut the capsular axis. Negotiate the FACO chopper under the capsular axis, embed, pull it towards the FACO tip, and while pulling, separate it. This is the lateral view. You embed the FACO tip inside. FACO chopper is embedded in the mid periphery. And as it is pulled towards the FACO tip, where the vacuum mode is on, it is separated. This creates another two quadrants from the D segment. And then in the end, you have four quadrants, and all these four quadrants can be emulsified one by one. Well, this is a grade two cataract. We will try and demonstrate a peripheral chop. Continuing our series of back to basics, our first session was on a vertical chop. We will do a horizontal chop here. Let's see if we are able to do that. Now the trick is Baba Hilaiyega name. Always it's a good idea to have a decent sized rexis. A vertical chop can be performed in a small rexis also. But for a peripheral chop, you need to be careful because if your rexis size is a little small, getting under the rexis to complete the peripheral engagement is slightly tricky. So we proceed and we perform a cortical cleaving hydro dissection. You can see it's a very soft cataract, but the mere fluffing of the cortex. So doing a peripheral chop in a soft cataract can be tricky, but maybe you can visualize once we remove the cortex floating cortex in front of the nuclear roof, we might be able to evaluate. Take a power 20. So for doing a peripheral chop, it's always a good idea to have a slight more exposure as compared to the vertical chop. Light ko dekhega. A horizontal chop, you need to come horizontally, engage the nucleus and separate. A vertical chop is comprising of two movements, downwards and splitting. A peripheral chop is comprised of three movements. First movement being moving towards, downwards then towards the phaco tip and then separation. So we create an engagement of the nucleus again 30-35 degree embedding. Go to the periphery, embed in the center 
pull towards the phaco tip and separate. So, we have created a chop. So, even it is a soft cataract you can do that. Let us see it again. Engage, go to the periphery, embed, down, pull towards the phaco tip and separate. Repeat it again. So, always embed in the meat of the nucleus which is at least 50 percent depth with a little burst of phaco since it is a soft cataract. Engage, pull the piece outwards, embed downwards, come towards your phaco tip and separate. There we have four quadrants now. Now, all you need to do is pull each quadrant one by one. So, maybe the, the ability for you to visualize the chop was not so clear because in soft cataracts there will be a lot of roughing of the nuclear plate and cortical fibers. So, the splitting may not be that clearly visible which it might be visible in a, a little hard cataract because then the chop is vertically absolutely seen very crystal clear. So, there you are. So, just to recapitulate. A vertical chop is comprising of two moves, downward engagement and splitting. Whereas in a peripheral chop, the downward engagement is at the periphery of the nucleus, more towards the equator of the cataract. Then second movement towards the phaco tip and the third movement splitting. So that is the basic difference. Peripheral chop works ideally in harder cataracts. Soft cataracts are a little tricky as you saw because you do not get a distinct chop uh, line, but if performed well, you can achieve a peripheral chop.